my name is Mabior Garan. Uh, I would like to ask for your permission to read this poems uh, from my phone. And you can bear with me because I've been suffering from an unknown disease for some time now. I was paralyzed, I was blind. So the person you're seeing before you here has come a very, very long way. The doctors didn't know what was wrong with me. Uh, so please excuse my how I look for Honorable Speaker, distinguished guests, all protocols are observed. After the speech of our, this was supposed to be yes, a, our CEO was supposed to speak before me. Uh, so I will pick it up. I will pick it up from our main belief uh, in the national conversation, South Sudan. Uh, if, if we believe in a, in a new faculty of interpretation of pan African, we've heard a lot of people speak before us. And we tend to speak a lot about the past of pan Africanism, but we want to see what is the present and the future as well. Pan Africanism as a philosophy was imported into Africa. After the Manchester Conference, uh, as we said, there were many people there, uh, those of Mujer Kamonyata and uh, Kwame Nkuma and others, uh, who have been at the forefront of this struggle. In Africa here, we could, not, we could not really see Africa. We could not really see Africa as a whole, like our brothers and sisters who are in the diaspora, because they were taken out of Africa and we, were, we remained in the continent. It's like being inside this building and wanting to see the whole building, you're inside the building when you can. And those Africans who were taken out of the continent, of the continent were able to look back to Africa and see it for a whole. But all of us were in our little tribal region, and it was difficult for us to see Africa as a whole. The cultural resistance of our brothers and sisters who were taken out of the continent, a lot of times we tend to have a, a mentality in Africa as if because we remained in the continent, uh, somehow we escaped the horrors and the traumas of the transatlantic slave trade. Like it was those people over there who were enslaved. It was those people over there who lost their culture. But we don't really see how we lost our culture in Africa as well. Because if we look at the, the African diaspora, from the minute or before even they were taken from the continent of Africa, there was a, a, a war that was taking place. And the, 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 the people who were defeated were carried into slavery. So it was uh, like Professor Jewels who says, that in the experience of Africans, it was not a slave trade, it was a racial war out of which the, the losers were, were taken out of Africa. So when we look at brothers and sisters in the diaspora, we, I, we could say that they are more African than us, you know, because when they were taken from Africa, their, their, their cultural resistance against oppression began immediately. But when you have the slave trade, and slavery as a direct oppression, it's easier for people to resist. But when colonialism was introduced, it was an upgrading of the system. It was, it was slavery 2.0, as, 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 as it were. So the effects of colonialism will be even more devastating than the effects of slavery uh, on, on African people in terms of us losing our, our, our culture. For me, who's standing before you, I come from a community in South Sudan, which is called the Dinka community. Today, the Dinka community has been turned by the British into a tribe. And I'm sure this is the experience among many other communities that, that here in Kenya. Uh, the Dinka people uh, speak Kidinka, and uh, they are a linguistic group within which there are many tribes and nationalities who speak this. And, and this, the same was the case all over Africa on the eve of colonization. You had Kitamba speaking people. We had Kikuyu speaking people, and within those linguistic groups, there were very many tribes. Like, for example, if you had in Okambani, you have the very north of Okambani is in northern Kenya, and it reaches all the way to central Kenya. And so, uh, Mkamba in southern Okambani will be more related to Amasai, you know, than another Mkamba from the very far north of Okambani. So, the way that our socioeconomics 
was going on in Africa in pre-colonial time was very different. So these tribes have been imposed on us. A lot of chiefs in Africa have been imposed on us because the system we had before that was a system of spiritual leadership. You could not have corrupt leaders in Africa because we had a checks and balances system. If a, if a, if a leader was corrupt, he could be slaughtered or, 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 or killed in the night by the people. But once the colonialists came and you you get your leadership through the guns and the power of the colonialists, it was even easier for our people to begin oppressing each other. So the cultural resistance in Africa started later, later on. Uh, and Kenya is a very big uh, in this struggle, Kenya is a, in particular, and East Africa in general, have been a inspiration for some, some of these struggles, for some of these struggles in diaspora. Like for example, many young people today are fans of reggae music and they might be into uh, Rastafarian reggaeism and culture and that kind of culture. But what many Kenyans don't know is that the Rastafari people started to wear their hair in locks as an inspiration of, uh, of the Mau Mau fighters. When the trial of uh, General China and, uh, and those of Dian Kimadi were going on, it used to be shown in the newsreels all over the world. And so the Jamaicans who were developing a new religion saw this and they were inspired by this. Here in Uganda, the Nyabingi order of the Rastafari was inspired by an African queen in Uganda who was fighting a spiritual war against the Europeans. The significance of the Rastafari movement as a, as a spiritual liberation movement has gone unnoticed by the African elite because we are trying to validate this new religion using colonial experiences. The Rastafari movement cannot be explained through the Bible. Haile Selassie cannot be turned into Jesus Christ. You know, this is a new religion that was brought out by the Jamaican people after the horrors of the transatlantic slave trade. It's ironic that we are, we are still in the Black History Month in Kenya, and Kenya should be proud as the Mau Mau was one, of, was one of the inspirations of the modern struggle in Africa and in the diaspora. Kenya should be proud of their place in Black History. The generations of our parents and their parents before them were able to transform our people to to transition our peoples out of the negative ex experiences of isolation caused by, the, by colonialism and slavery and into, more, into the modern era. I take this opportunity to quote Franz Fanon. He said, each generation must, out of relative obscurity, discover its mission, fulfill it, or betray it. The struggle of our parents and our parents' parents have given us this day. We are thankful for their sacrifices. But what is the mission of, the gener of this generation? Have we discovered it? And are we ready to fulfill it? That is what the National Conversation of South Sudan, of who are the chair of the Board of Trustees, represents. A new faculty of interpretation of the struggle of African people. This was the dying wish of the great Pan-Africanist Mortimer Plano, and we have taken up this challenge in the National Conversation in South Sudan. How can we end the colonial and slave society which still linger on in many parts of the continent, even after the end of colonialism and slavery? Before I proceed, I would like to say that my, my intention with these remarks is not to be offensive to anyone. I am not trying to offend anybody's faith, but to be factual. The truth should strengthen anyone's faith if we accept God as truth. I am not attacking on anyone's religion either. But the negative experiences of colonialism and the transatlantic slave trade has left our peoples with a spiritual problem. Many, many people have asked today, what is the problem? Where did we go wrong? 
you know, and in, and in our in the process of our liberation in Africa, we have left out the spiritual aspect of liberation. What is colonialism and slavery? Colonialism and slavery are the dehumanization of the human being. If we look at slavery as a dehumanization of the African and colonialism as an upgrading of that system, we have been dehumanized through colonization of the divine. The very concept of the divine has been, has been colonized. We are struggling to find our humanity because we are confused about our divinity. If man is created in the image of God, then this is our primary identity. And if at the same time we have accepted an image of God which does not look like us, then where are we headed? You know? If in the deepest villages of Africa we still hang the portrait of Caesar Borgia and your other European actors who played Jesus on TV, then where are we headed? Really spiritually. A man was recently deported from Kenya. I'm sure all of you know the guy who was deported walking around the streets of Nairobi pretending to be Jesus. It's not a joke, it's it has sure. It's our conviction in the national conversation of South Sudan that we must go beyond Pan Africanism. Pan Africanism, in, in the national conversation, we believe that Pan Africanism was a, began as a reaction. It was a reactionary movement, it was not revolutionary. It was a reaction to what white people did to us. But our true experience in Africa is that we are many tribes who are from different corners and we knew, we considered ourselves as human beings. If we fought with another community, it would be like any other uh, human uh, family fighting against another because of uh, economic reasons. But we didn't fight because of tribal hatred or issues of race and things like that. So, what would be revolutionary would be for Africans to take back our humanity as black people on the continent and become one African people. It's only when we take back our humanity can we raise, can we rise as a society and become one nation. Our future depends on it. In conclusion. I would like to say something about feminism within the Pan African within Pan Africanism. I realize that brothers are shy at best when it comes to the topic of feminism. People get bashful when they say the word feminism, even you know, it's a problem. But those who don't know or understand it are hostile toward the topic and are engaged in an all-out war with our sisters. And the radical feminists are fighting the Europeanized brothers. Some brothers even claim that the oppression of women is African culture. The National Conversation of South Sudan calls, has, has rebranded feminism and call it women's empowerment. So that some of our very macho men don't feel shy. But on a serious note, Sheikh Anta Diop prove the cultural unity of our people based on the Nile Valley civilization. Africans are one people, culturally. If the Nile Valley was a powerful matriarch, matriarchal society prior to Greco-Roman domination, and today we are aggressively misogynistic and follow the corrupt colonial patriarchy, then what happened was it is another manifestation of divide and rule. We are, we are a house divided, and we all know what they say about a house divided. It cannot stand. The National Conversation of South Sudan believes in the principles that a nation rises no higher than its women. Women are our, our educators, even before early childhood development, in informal education. This is what is, this is what teaches us to be good human beings, not academics. The state of a nation will always be reflected by the state of their woman. This can be seen if you are to compare socioeconomic development in Kenya and in South Sudan. Though we both have a long way to go as people, 
Kenya is ahead of South Sudan in women's empowerment. And this is why the economy of Kenya is stronger than the economy of South Sudan. I shall end with a quote by the great Samora Mashere, who said, the emancipation of women is not an act of charity, the result of a humanitarian or compassionate attitude. The liberation of women is a fundamental necessity for the revolution, a guarantee of its continuity and a precondition for its victory. Aluta continue.